Hello there, scholars. Are you ready to learn some addition strategies? Awesome, you came to the right place. You might be saying to yourself, hey, wait a minute, I already know how to add. That's cool, but what we'll be adding is some new strategies to your tool chest of addition so that you can add in lots of new ways. A lot of times when we think about addition, what we're thinking about is what's called the standard algorithm. Of course, I like to just call it Stalgo. It's a cool name for it. When we do the standard algorithm, it usually requires us to place the greater number on top of a lesser number, and then to begin to add from the ones place to the tens place to the hundreds place and so on and making sure to regroup as we go along. It will end up looking something kind of like this. So it kind of ends up looking like this. When we add 345 plus 287, we start here in the ones place. Five plus seven is 12. We write a two here in the ones place and we carry a group of 10. We rewrite it like this. One plus four plus eight, that ends up with uh, being 13. We put a three here in the tens place and we carry a group of hundred up here to the to the hundreds place we write plus one representing one group of a hundred one plus three plus two is six or six hundreds and we end up with our sum of six hundred thirty two that's called the standard algorithm adding with the standard algorithm is a great way of adding but my gosh there are so many other ways to show our adding abilities so let's try addition with base 10 blocks. And now that you're in third grade, let's just go ahead and draw what those base 10 blocks would look like rather than having to use the actual pieces. So when I draw it, it will look something like this. Here's my 345. I have three hundreds flats. I have four uh, little lines representing the 10 rods. And I have five little dots representing the ones. So that would be 300. 45. Down here, representing the 287, I have two boxes representing 100s flats and eight tens rods represent, representing the 80. And right here, I have seven little dots representing the seven ones. So now, in this uh, addition with the base 10 blocks, I need to combine these and I will also have to show my regrouping. So let's see how that would look. So just like I did when I did the standard algorithm, I, I went ahead and I started here in the ones place. So I had five ones at the top for the five here in 345, and I had seven ones down here representing the seven in 287. And I grouped them, and I noticed that when I have a total of 10, I need to regroup. So I put a box around those 10 that left me with two ones here, and this whole nother group of 10. So I drew that here, I drew an arrow showing that another group of 10 joined this, uh, the tens place over here. So let's look and see what happened now. So with that ad additional group of 10, I had five here plus another five, which means I need to make a group. This represents now 100. It's 10 groups of 10, that's 100. So I'll be carrying those to join this group of hundreds over here, but I am left down here with three tens. Okay, so check it out. I took that group of 10 tens and I drew it right here, representing another group of 100. And now, if you count it with me, I have one, two, three, four, five, six hundreds. Now that I've combined and regrouped all of my parts here in my addition with the base 10 blocks, I could see that I had 600 plus three tens plus the two ones all brought together to equal a sum of 632, which it shouldn't surprise you is the same sum I got when I did the standard algorithm over here. But boys and girls, there are more ways of adding than just with the standard algorithm or with base 10 blocks. There's also adding with expanded form. Let's check that one out. When I expand the number 345, I am left with 300 plus 40 plus 5. That's right, 345. And when I expand the number 287, I have 200 plus 80 
plus seven. So this, my friends, is what addition with expanded form would start to look like. Now I'm going to add like this. I can start here in my ones place and add five plus seven and I get 12. When I move over to the tens place, I can add 40 plus 80 and I have 120. And finally, when I add 300 plus 200, I have 500. So check it out. Now I have this problem, 500 plus 120 plus 12. But I know that I could use one of my math addition properties. I think I'll start with the associative property, which means I could start with adding just two of these add-ins here. And I'll add 500 plus 120, and I'll worry about this part later. Using the associative property, I added 500 plus 120 first to get 620. But my entire addition problem is not over yet. I still need to add in the 12. So now, a very simple addition problem, I need to add 620 plus 12. I did some quick mental math, and when I added 620 plus 12, I ended up with that same number, 632. We saw 632 as a sum when we did the standard algorithm and when we also did the addition with base 10 blocks. But boys and girls, that leaves us with just three ways of adding. Let's have a fourth way. How about addition on a number line? When we think of number lines, sometimes we think that a number line must begin with a zero way down here on the left side. That's not always true. This number line is called an open number line. I could start it wherever I want. And since I'm adding, I'm gonna start it where my biggest add-in is. My biggest add-in is 345. So I will begin my number line at 345. So check it out. There is the 345 right there at the start of my open number line. And my next step is to add 287 to my 345 by doing some fancy skip counting. So here's my 345. I need to add the 287 to it. But I'm going to use some of my skills from my expanded form. And I'm going to start by just adding 200 of the 287. And using my skip counting skills, I know that I can break 200 into a group of into a group of hundreds. So here we go. Adding 100 brings me to 445, and adding another group of 100 brings me to 545. So I just added 200 to 345, leaving me at 545. But still, I must keep going on the number line. My next group of numbers to add will be the. 8 tens or 80 and I will skip along I'm going to skip 8 groups of 10 and see where I end up so let's add 80 to our number line we left off at 545 and we're going to break it up into groups of 10 and it will go like this adding 10 to 545 brings us to 555 565 575 585 595 605, 615, and finally 625. As you can see, what I just did was add eight groups of 10 to 545, leaving us at 625. My last step will be to add this group of seven ones that I've been adding through all these other methods. So way over here on the number line, Way down here where we left off, I will add seven ones. But wait a minute. That would mean I'd have to make a lot of bumps. I'd have to go 626, 627, 628, 629. Wait a minute, that's gotta get really hard. I know that seven is actually a group of five and a two. So that what I could do here at the very, very end is instead of making little seven uh, skips by one, I could do add a group of five and then a group of two, and I'll see where I end up. 
that's the really scholarly way of doing this. We left off at 625, and now all we have to do is add the seven ones. We broke the seven ones into a five plus a two. So adding five, that brings us from 625 all the way here to 630. And then two more brings us to 632. Oh my goodness, isn't that the same number that we saw in all of the other strategies? That's right, our sum does not change. But what did change is our understanding of all the ways that we could add. Wow, that's so cool. And wow, I got to use a lot of markers today. Adding is really cool, especially when you know all the different ways to be able to show your understanding of addition. So try out these methods and start building up your ability to show your scholar scholarliness in many ways.